to Sulzburg. Come on down and make some art. Hi, welcome. My name is Tim Soper, and this is my art studio. Today, I'd like to share with you a great lesson about an artist named Henri Rousseau. He was a Frenchman who made amazing landscapes that were inspired by some of the things that he saw in his life and in his mind. Hmm. In his mind? That sounds weird! Well, in fact, his work does look like a real landscape, but the more that you look at it, the more you start to see things that just aren't right. And that's the whole mystery and beauty about his artwork, is that the more you look at it, the more things you question, and the more amazing things seem to pop out at you. For instance, take a look at this landscape right here, called Exotic Jungle. In this landscape, at first it seems like a normal jungle landscape, but the more that you look at it, the more things become, well, mysterious. Take a look. some oranges and some flowers and a monkey and another monkey and another monkey and some monkey hands and some oranges and some dark green tree leaves and some yellow leaves and some uh, regular green leaves and even some red grass. Hey, are those monkeys really small or are those flowers and oranges real big? Good question. A lot of people probably looked at his artwork and saw some of the, oh, I don't know, childish things or untrained things that were in his artwork and didn't believe that he could be a professional. But in fact, his artwork and its whimsical ways kind of influenced Paolo Picasso and many of the Surrealists later on. Well, what was interesting was that Rousseau actually worked from resources, but he never actually went to these jungles. He would actually go visit botanical gardens, the zoo, and imagine what these animals or plants' native habitats would look like, and then paint them into a landscape. That's why sometimes the fruits and the vegetation or the animals, their sizes don't actually match up with what they would normally be. So for this project, we have one of the greatest resources available to us that he didn't have. We have the internet. So what I did is I went ahead and I kind of looked up different photos of animals and plants that I might want to put inside my picture. I suggest that you go on the internet before you start and get some resources for yourself too. You really need some resources if you want to have a Rousseau authentic type of piece. Meaning that we want to have things that look like real plants or real animals, but maybe we are making up our own landscape that they would go into. Hmm, what do I want? I want a, I want a lion, I want some snakes. Maybe some monkeys, maybe some kind of uh, fruits or vegetables. Alright, now that you got some resources, let's get started. Are you ready? Great. Alright, so what we're going to first do is work on our foreground. And the foreground is the stuff that's closest to you. An example is if, is if you put your hand in front of your face right now and look at something across the room, what you're going to see is that your hand's bigger than what's across the room. That's the way your foreground works. You want to have things that are really, really big. So we're going to just put plants and just grass and tropical stuff like that. Right now what I'm adding is my middle ground, and those are the things that are in the middle of your paper that are at a medium size that you'd have to maybe take a few steps into your landscape to get to, and those are my animals. So I add an elephant, a snake, a lion. Lastly, we're going to add a nice little bumpy horizon line, and that's going to be the jungle line. That's going to be what separates our sky from our land. 
After we have our foreground, middle ground, and background done, what we're going to then do is just outline everything in Sharpie. And the reason why we do this is we want to be able to see all those nice details that we did when we looked at our resources and drew our animals and our plants in the foreground. And don't worry if your Sharpie lines aren't exactly on your pencil lines because what we're going to then do is go back with an eraser and just clean up all those pencil lines so all we have is a nice graphic bold black line. After we have all our outlining done, what we're going to do is just start adding color. Now when you add color, what you want to do is make more complex colors. You don't want to use color straight out of the brand box. So if you notice right now, I'm doing my night sky and I've added blue and I've added purple and then lastly I'll add the black. You'll notice while I'm working my way and my colors through I add one color going either horizontally and then I'll add the next color going vertically. That cross hatching in effect almost weaves the colors together to get a nice new complex color. Also a good tip is when you use a secondary color like an orange or a purple or a green the colors that mix well with them are the two primary colors that make them. For instance, I just used green, so the primary colors that you could use that would add a nice tone to it would be a blue or a yellow. So a lot of the time when I'm blending, I'll use the two colors that make up the color, the secondary color. Also when blending, you usually want to start with the lightest color first. So for instance, I just did that elephant. I'm going to use gray first, then add in the purples. Next up, I'm doing the lion. I'm going to add my yellow, then add the brown. It just helps with your shading and your technique, pretty much, when you just start with the lighter color and then build darker. Because it's always easier to get darker, but once you put down a dark color, you can't go lighter. And also, if you notice, just like painting, you want to start with your background and work your way forward. It's the same thing with coloring. So if you notice, I started with my background, then worked my middle ground, and lastly, I'm adding my foreground. And if you notice with these flowers, I started with yellow. I'm adding now the orange. And lastly, I'll add the red. Alright, so there you go. There's our Fantasy Landscape by Rousseau. Here are some more examples, and they all pretty much follow that same pattern of tropical plants and vegetation in the foreground, animals in the middle ground, and then just kind of a squiggly horizontal line for our separation of our sky and our land. And remember, it's a jungle, so you want to have everything below that squiggly line, some kind of green vegetation. And you can see all these ones have a little bit of a different variation on animals. It doesn't even matter which way you hold the page. All right, this one's a little bit more complex with the waterfall added in it, but still the same format. And artists have been using that format for years to make a believable and interesting landscape. So go out there and create your own fantasy Henri Rousseau landscape. Hope you enjoyed my video. Have a good day.